All right, team. I thought it would be worthwhile to spend a little more time exploring this difference between the equals IRR function and the equals XIRR function. And to do that effectively, I created this visual. On the screen, you'll notice two similar schedules. The top schedule shows IRRs calculated using the equals IRR function. And what we're doing is measuring the IRR for a dollar invested and assuming a return of $3 over different periods. And you'll notice that the formula only requires cash flows as inputs. If you delete one of the values, you will also note that the equals IRR function returns the same IRR as the figure above. And that is because it is counting one less period. We'll hit Control Z to undo. And the takeaway here is that the equals IRR function assumes it is counting identical periods as it relates to time elapsed. The table below calculates IRRs using the equals x IRR formula. Here you'll notice that the inputs have been expanded to include dates, which is what makes this formula more flexible. And for any period greater than a year, and for any number of full years, the IRR and x IRR formulas will match fairly well, but only up to a couple decimal points. And to demonstrate that, let's get a little more precise. Then we'll go below and do the same. And what you'll notice is that the numbers start to vary. For periods 1, 2, and 3, the numbers are identical. But then IRR period 4 starts to reveal a discrepancy. So why does that happen? Well, it's not merely coincidence that the discrepancy occurs in the fourth year. The answer is that leap years throw you off. The XIRR formula is using the dates in the red box to calculate your rate of return. And if we go down to period 4, You'll notice that the number of days in period one is 365, the same for the second, and the same for the third period. But then in the fourth period, it's 366 days. And as we've mentioned before, the formula above equals IRR is assuming identical periods. So that's what creates the discrepancy. As a quick side note, this spreadsheet is using the date function to manipulate dates. The value you enter in the box for year, month, or day will advance the date by that number of years, months, or days, respectively. But even with this problem, you're still pretty close for full years. As an example, we can increase years by two instead of one. And you'll notice that the formulas and the associated IRRs for each of the two tables match once again. Here in period one, under the XIRR formula, which now reflects a return for two years, you'll see under the IRR formula, that same rate of return. But then, of course, in the second period, we're now including the leap year. So you start to see that discrepancy once again. But the biggest discrepancy between these two formulas occurs for intervals less than a year. And to visualize that, let's change the date intervals to one month. And that multiple on your money on an annualized basis is pretty outstanding. So we have to expand this column so you can see the rate of return. So the XIRR formula is returning the annualized rate of return. To compare that to the equals IRR formula, we can assume that this first period is one month and then annualize it off to the right. And what you'll notice is that these numbers aren't very similar at all. In the first period, you're off by a substantial amount. But even looking down at the third period, here you have a rate of return of 8,000% compared against a rate of return of 7,357%. As you work your way down, you can start to see it converge. Here in period 12, you have a return of 197%. Period 12 under the IRR formula is 200%. Or at least it appears that way as the numbers become smaller. And again, what's happening is that you don't have equal periods. You'll see time elapse between each period below the date. And starting with period 1, you have 31 days, all the way through the fourth period where you have 30 days. Then 31 days in the fifth period, and 30 days in the sixth period, and so on. The other problem is that the XIRR function as illustrated in a previous post, works off of the 365 day year. So if instead you think, well, I could just enter the same number of days, and let's try that, you'll notice pretty quickly that it still doesn't work. And recall that we're using these rates of return and comparing them against the annualized rates of return to the right. And the problem here is that you can't have partial days, and that's what would be required to divide 365 by 12 and get equal periods. I hope that helps explain some of the differences. In my opinion, it's worth it to go through the extra effort, put in the dates, and use the equals XIRR function. 
and that way you don't have to worry about the time elapsed. The formula will simply do the work for you. And of course, I'm making the template available below the video, should you want to download it and play with these figures yourself. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.